Hi and welcome in this video. In this video, I gonna do um, a simple, a really simple plugin because it's my uh, first C sharp plugin, and I'm usually developing in C and not in C sharp. So I might be editing a bit when I have to search for the syntax, the right syntax. But yeah, what I try to do is really simple base plugin, which basically prints messages, uh, shows if possible a hut which the player count, uh, the current map, and the server name, and uh, um, let me think, the time left. So just for a short explanation what I tried to do, I quote this, this is just the main plugin what I'm gonna do. After this I make the map plugin, then the rights plugin. Rights I mean which like VIP, admin and so on. Yeah, the first what I'm gonna do is create a C Sharp project in Visual Studio. So what we're gonna do is class library and then a project for creating a class library that targets net or net standard. Next. I don't know what, uh, I just call it endless united like my server. So the first, what the instance see is that the first file is ca called class one. I have to change this to main. Main. Your I would like to provide Yes. Ah, that's nice. So the first what we're gonna do is package manager console and then we go here and we copy this and we execute this here. Paste and we are done. Let's use the template. Why would do it all by myself? Doesn't make any sense. So that's the module name, module version, mo auto name. All right. Okay, then we have hello world. That's not what I want. Let's make it main. I just call it like on a server. 1.0. Okay, and then I write my name. Uh, can I escape it like in C? Nice. Right. Like this. We also let this like this and then we just compile and we try okay does the base work if the base work then we can start to code place plugins in this folder each plugin should be in its own subfolder all right okay i got it we can delete this so we create a plugin a, a folder endless united we break the endless united dll here and i think it should be auto loaded let's I force, I, by the way, I know I can hot reload in this stuff, but I don't prefer, prefer to do this because some things you can't, I hot reload, I think. I just do it all the time like this. I'm anyway use it to a hundred times restarting the game. So now the first thing that I'm asking myself is how I can check if the plugin is loaded. Obviously I can now take this command, paste it in the console and you can see it worked. But what is the command? Is it like this? Plugins? I don't know. I actually don't know. Ah, CSS plugins list. Okay, here you can see it loaded suggestfully and that's pretty much it. And now we can start to do actually what we do. So what we do is actually to need a timer, a C sharp timer. I think there is a timer. We need using system threading uh, what was it again? I think it was just system trading. So what we do is now we create a private timer. We make it nullable timer. And then we have to create the timer when the plugin is loading. And we can do this by using the variable, which is the timer class. A timer object, then we create a new timer, the callback. Let's make it like uh, at. No, let me think. We need. Do we have multiple timers? I think so. So let's call this add timer. Make more sense, it's more logical. Oops here a timer and here then 
at timer rollback next that's the state okay that's dual time that's i think okay here stands it's timer of time delay okay Um, let's make it 10 seconds and the period how much the timer uh, is like repeating itself in, in which in which um, in which frequency and here we make time span from seconds actually we could do from minutes to two minutes did we somewhere for forgot I think not now we have to create the callback and let's create a callback callbacks but I will do the callbacks at the bottom makes more sense to me private void at timer call back so what we do here do something Oops. Now we want here a random chance of which message will get executed. But I think also, if I can remember correctly, you have to, I think, prepare it for the next frame. Or uh, you have to mark it for the next frame. So it gets then in the next in game frame execute, executed. I think it was something like this. So what we want to now do is a random chance since we have three messages. We have one the Discord add message, one the website message, and one the rules message. About the rules, I have also do thing what I do because in 1.6 I did if you type slash rules, it displayed a MOD which the rules. Something like this is not possible in CS2, I guess. We will think, but we, let's first make the chance. So what we do is a switch statement. I think makes mostly sense. New random next it's pff, let's make it one two three and here case one break case two you have to break all the time otherwise it executes otherwise it executes for example one and then it continues break do we do a def default i don't know break No, we don't gonna do it. We don't need this actually. No, we don't need this. This not, doesn't make any sense in this case. Now, what we basically want to do here inside is sending the print message. But I need not to do research about the next frame thing because I can't remember anymore. Ch change smoke grenade color to a custom. Okay, so it's server point next frame. So I assume like this. And then we make <coughs> print a statement server print to chat all. And no, okay, I get it. Uh, chat colors, which colors are available? I take blue, of course. <laughs> I assume on the string afterwards a space like this, and then we write endless united. Then let's make again a space. Chat. What's the ah default? Okay, nice. I wanted to ask what's the default color, but it's just called default. That's nice. And then by playing our playing our servers, you accept automatically the chat colors what make which color do we make the comment i think blue gray whatever this is <laughs> uh, slash rules but we need here remove the space i assume he mean which one space after it after we define the color and then we make here we copy this and basically make the same in the other two cases as well 
and here we make let me think what was the other one visit our official website at like this and then add our add <laughs> here we need a placeholder in your fav favorite like this and here we make chat colors oops chat colors blue gray space here like this and here remove the space here we have also to remove the space no unnecessary spaces so what we have to do basically is now to get the ip of the server and the port and to print it here how i can get it i think it's in 1.6 i would make get pre cover string but let me test something the console host name ah nice okay what is about oh port is isn't working why is port not working let me think that's weird why is port not working oh thanks god i have it's copied oh my god i would be so mad port port host port is it host port wait host oops host oh man host port yes it is host, host port all right so it's ip that's the input and free covers that's how we can get it inside the plugin all right but we know try to do is to get the uh, ip no it does exist i'm just retarded ip what is the problem ah oh, then don't annoy me <laughs> really don't annoy me then let's do this whatever it wants to store port that's the conver find uh what was it again host pod it's host pod like this and then we need uh address if yep, you need this and i want to combine this can i do this like this i don't know Oh yeah, this works. Okay. By the way, you can see maybe I'm not that into in C sharp. Okay, like this. Great. And that was basically what I want to do for the first try. And of course the hat we have to do also today. But let me rebuild it. Ah, yes, okay. Now you can see. And it's randomly, right? Yep. Yeah. I just want to see if the IP thing is working. Because right now... Yep, it's the IP is not working. Nope, there's no way that the IP don't get even one time executed. Of course it does. Hmm... Oh, it is because we're using the... Oh my god. Don't tell me. <laughs> no. No way. <laughs> Please, no. Ooh. <gasps> yes. That's actually good. Because now we know, okay, it was actually because of this. I think we might have to wrap the Conva find also into server next frame. This would make sense. So let's put this like this. Let's Remember, this isn't a 
Uh, okay. So what I did is a little research and I found out that you can get it, which get primitive value. Well, well, well. I wish I would knew this before, but you can't knew anything. Maybe to try this maybe. Because the port just contains why I'm asking is if you type IP you see here a point so it's a string host port but on the port it's just a number and also when you type host name so I assume now it might be an integer but I don't know honestly So what I did now is for the IP to get the string value, which hopefully returns the string according to the description, and for the port, which may or may not return a integer, we get the integer. Oh, it works. Finally. Okay, so string value, the me me method string value for String if you will get the whole string and get primitive value for other data types like integer or float for example. I wish I would knew this shit before. <laughs> then let's rebuild this like this. And great, everything is like I want it. Nice. Okay, exit main menu. I forgot to mention if you create a timer, you have also to dispose the timer. And you can do this by simply on load, writing at timer and dispose. That's it. I just forgot to mention this. I hope you like to watch this video. I will continue tomorrow. Leave a like if you want more and thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.